Good morning, everybody, and a warm welcome to our worship this Sunday morning. It's great to welcome you to St. Peter's Church. My name's uh, Stephen, and I'm the vicar, and I'll be leading this service through together with Martha. Hi, everyone. I'm Martha. I'm the youth minister here at St. Peter's, and today our theme is All Different, All One. We're thinking about how we come together as one in a church and what that looks like and how we deal with it. As we uh, begin, let's uh, use these words from the psalm for today, Psalm 108. Uh, we're going to use some words from that psalm to begin our worship together. I'm going to lead us uh, in the first half of each uh, verse and then Martha will lead the response and I invite you to join in with Martha as you sit at home. My heart, O God, is steadfast. I will sing and make music with all my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love, higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. And now we're going to declare our faith this morning as we sing our first song, This I Believe, led by Jane and her band. Spirit. 
reading is from Galatians chapter 3, verse 23 to 29. Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. So the law was put in charge of us until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under the supervision of law. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you were baptised into Christ and have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, and there is according to the promise. This is the word of the Lord. So we now come to a time of confession, a time where we think about how God loves us and can forgive us, and therefore a time to reflect on things that we've done recently that we're not proud of, things that we've done wrong. So let's begin our confession. God shows his love for us in this way. While we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Father, forgive us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Father, forgive us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Father, forgive us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your son. Father, forgive us. Father, forgive us. For not loving you with our whole being, nor our neighbour as ourselves. Father, forgive us. Father, forgive us. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. So I'm uh, joined uh, now by um, our new facilities coordinator, Mark Piercy. Thank you for agreeing to a brief chat for our Sunday service, Mark. Um, now, you've been working as our facilities coordinator for just a little bit over a month now. Um, how would you uh, describe your job for us? Uh, it's just basically keeping the church COVID secure at the moment at these uncertain times, so locking, locking the church up, getting it back up to standard after we've been left for quite a while at the moment. So it's nice and clean and safe to come into. Great. Well, it's great to have you on the team. Um, and um, you don't live in Oundle, do you? Just tell, tell us a bit about where you come from. I'm from Wellingborough. It's only a small commute, so a 20 miles. I'm used to doing two or 3,000 miles a week in my previous role, so it's nice little relaxed role with it now. Right. For us in Oundle, we might think of 20 minutes as a long commute. Not at all, no. I'm used to driving to Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, all over the place. So what was your role before you joined us? I was a national manager for a cleaning company. I have been for about the past 20 years now. This is nice and local. Okay, so cleaning and facilities coordination is your expertise. Is, yes. Um, so it's great to have you um, join the team. Uh, yeah. uh, thank you very much for chatting to us. No problem. Um, and we'll look forward to seeing you around. Thank you. Lovely to be able to get to know Mark, our new facilities coordinator, a little better. Now we're going to go to uh, the Sutterby family, who are going to read for us our next Bible reading. The second reading is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault, just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you've won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, Treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, 
Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, I will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. This, this is the word, word of the Lord. Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you to uh, the Sotheby's. Well, we're continuing uh, our journey through Matthew's Gospel and we have arrived at these verses in Matthew chapter 18. I wonder if you're familiar with the term life hack. A hack is a handy tip. Uh, you might find online some uh, handy hacks for, for instance, uh, poaching eggs in different ways. Well, a life hack is a handy tip for life. I saw a headline this week advertising itself as a life hack for smart people. It said this, if you don't like where you are, move. You're not a tree. What do you think of that? If you don't like where you are, move. You're not a tree. Here's what it went on to say. In a perfect world, everyone would be kind, considerate and generous. We'd all thrive in an atmosphere where no one was ever cross, upset or maligned. But we don't live in a perfect world. Some people are inconsiderate, uh, malign our character, question our motives or just don't get our jokes. And the article goes on to suggest um, some sensible ways that we might learn to live alongside people we dislike. But ultimately it goes on to say this, if you don't like where you are, move. You're not a tree, a life hack for smart people don't like the people you're with if you're smart you'll move move club move pub move house move church but what about Jesus what does he say if a brother or sister wrongs you go and see them point out the issue just between the two of you well hang on Jesus really go and see them bring uh, the issue out into the open deal with it head-on what kind of a life hack is that? Can I let you into a secret? What I'm tempted to do when someone annoys me or hurts me. You know, my preferred approach, 100% ignore it. Pretend it didn't happen. Smile politely, continue to be polite, civil, surface friendly with that person. And then maybe moan about them behind their back. That's my natural preference it's what i'll do if i'm left to my own devices but you know the thing is i'm trying to be a follower of jesus and jesus he says love one another as i have loved you he says love your neighbor as yourself he says love your enemy you are all one in Christ Jesus. That's what we heard from St. Paul in that first reading that Joe read. All one in Christ Jesus. All one. You know, if a church is doing its job, or maybe we could put that better, um, if the church is really doing properly what Jesus called it to do, well, it ought to surely be a, a right old mixture of people. A collection of people from every background and every tribe. People like you, people not like you at all. People you agree with and people who you absolutely disagree with. Maybe about almost everything. People who vote like you in elections and referendums and people who really don't vote like you at all. People from your culture and background and people from really different cultures and backgrounds and identities. You know, the promise in the Bible, Revelation chapter 7, goes like this. One day, when King Jesus returns and God makes a new heaven and a new earth, there'll be gathered people out of every tribe and every language and every nation on earth. God's people, his children, all one, made one through Jesus' death and resurrection, his family. We don't have to wait till then to glimpse it. No, because church at its best should give us a glimpse of that now, today. 
a gathering of all kinds of people, including those totally different from us. If you don't like who you're with, says the culture, move on. No, says Jesus, you don't have that option. Like it or not, those people in church, now they're your family. Love one another. You know, pretend it didn't happen, smile politely, that can be a really attractive option. Continue polite, civil, surface friendly. A church where everyone does that might look like a church where everyone gets along fine. But you know, it's probably a church where few people really know one another. Not enough to get beneath the surface. Not enough that it's a church where people could say of it, they really love one another. So let's return to those words in Matthew chapter 18. If a brother or sister sins, go and point out the fault just between the two of you. Am I my brother's keeper? Does my sister's life concern me? Yes, says Jesus here. Loving one another, that's hard work. That means getting beneath the surface. That means not being content with polite, civil, surface friendly. If you've got a problem with your brother or sister, don't pretend that it doesn't exist. Don't pretend friendship, but then keep a distance. No, says Jesus, go and sort it out. Now we need to pause here. Because it wasn't so many pages back in Matthew's Gospel, back in Matthew 7, where Jesus was saying this, don't judge others or you too will be judged. Before you try and take a speck out of your brother's eye, attend to the great plank sticking out of your own. So how do we square these two? Got a problem with your brother and sister? Go and tell them. Don't judge your brother and sister. Attend to your own faults first. Which is it, Jesus? Well, I don't think these two uh, bits of teaching contradict one another. If Christians claim to, aim to, love one another, then honesty must be essential. Ignoring issues, pretending they're not there, that might lead to apparent calm, but not a calm, not a community where people really know one another, understand one another, love one another. If I'm to love someone else who's utterly different from me, then I'll need to break through the surface of those differences. Break through the surface of the conflicts. Break through the surface and try to understand the real person underneath. If people who are radically different are called to be family, well, there's going to be some rocky times as they work out why they're so different. There's neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek, slave nor free. All are one in Christ Jesus. That's what St. Paul said to the church in Galatia. The church right from the beginning was a radical community, slaves and slave owners. Now, says St. Paul of them, you're equals, brothers, sisters. Utterly radical. If people who are radically different are called to be family, well, there's surely going to be some rocky times as they work out why they're so different. There's neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, all are one in Christ Jesus, says Paul to the church in Galatia. The church from the beginning was a radical community, slaves and slave owners. Now, says St. Paul to them, you are equals, brothers, sisters completely radical. Jews and Gentiles deeply separated for centuries. Now you're family. No wonder so many letters in the New Testament address conflict and disagreement in the church. You're telling me this person is now my brother, my sister, my equal and I'm to love them? Wow, but their interests are so different from mine. Love it needs to be based on honesty, not pretense. Don't pretend your brother or sister hasn't hurt you, offended you, annoyed you. Deal with it, person to person. But when you go visit them, uh, maybe about the speck in their eye that's really irritating you, remember Matthew chapter 7 and presume as you knock on their door that you've got a 30-foot beam sticking out of your eye socket yourself. Don't ignore the issue you have with your brother or sister, but go humbly presuming he may well have uh, issues that he might be able to assist you with. 
He might be, very well be able to help you recognising some of your own faults that you've not seen. So that Matthew 18 and Matthew 7 go hand in hand. And you know what might just happen if that encounter goes well? I'm so sorry. I never realised that when I did that, it affected you in that way. Is that why you do that? I never understood that before. When it goes well, it might be two people end up saying, I'm sorry, I forgive. Two people who understand one another better. Two people who've begun beyond the surface friendly and begun to dig down towards understanding, appreciation, love of someone entirely different. Well, some disputes, says Jesus, you're not going to be able to sort out one-on-one. -on -one. You'll need to uh, find some other brothers and sisters, some others in the church to give their wisdom, to hear the issues and help resolve the arguments. That's what Jesus goes on to say in that passage. And then it seems to end a little bit harshly, because Jesus says, if your brother or sister refuses to listen to you and to the wisdom of the church as a whole, then treat them as a sinner or a tax collector. Those are words that come from the mouth of Jesus Christ, who himself was called just a few chapters before, the friend of sinners and tax collectors, the one who never writes people off. So even where the situation remains unresolved, if I follow Jesus, I am to treat those I continue to disagree with as Jesus treated those who'd done wrong and gone wrong, with compassion and grace alongside the challenge. Well, we've thought about what you do um, when things hurt you, when someone's hurt you, or you've hurt them, or vice versa. But actually, Jesus' words say, if a brother or sister sins. It's not just about issues I might have when you have hurt me. It can be more general. A church is a group of people, utterly different from one another, wrestling and rejoicing in their differences, working out together what it means to follow Jesus, and helping one another to do that, helping each other follow Imagine the scene, perhaps. Uh, Stephen driving proudly, sporting his clerical collar, giving you a lift, the countryside rushing towards you through the windscreen at unusual speed. Thank you so much for the lift, you might say, but um, is, this a, is this a 40 limit? I think it might be a 40 limit. What does it mean to follow Jesus? For how I drive, how I spend money, the decisions I make that affect God's creation and the climate. Are we a community where we can gently challenge each other and help each other follow Jesus? All of this comes with a huge health warning because it's got to be Matthew 18 and Matthew 7, hand in hand. My starting point for everything is that I'm a forgiven sinner, saved by grace. Day by day, by his Holy Spirit, God is making me more like Jesus, but... My goodness, there's a long way to go. I have multiple planks in my eyes. I live in a glass house, so I need to stay well away from stones. If I ever want to gently challenge my brother or sister out something in their life, that, that sense of living in a glass house better be my starting point and my ending point. But if we're family, if we're called to love one another, then I am my brother's keeper, my sister's keeper. My life is your concern. Your life is my concern. We're family. We're family, I'm afraid to say it, from now until forever. In fact, I'm glad to say it. We are family from now and on into eternity. We, as church, are bound together for even longer than the oldest tree has ever lived. And the beauty of the gospel is this. Jesus came to reconcile. Reconcile you and me to God. Reconcile you and me to one another. Reconcile human beings and all their beautiful difference to one another. And all of that work of reconciliation, it begins with communities called church. Next week we're going to continue thinking about this theme as we look at the parable that Jesus told immediately after this on forgiveness. So Martha, this is a really important week, isn't it, for yes. schools? And I know you're in and out of Prince William School often yeah. as part of your job. 
Um, what can we be praying for Prince William School in particular as they come to be returning to, to um, school this September? Yeah, so Prince William School, like many, have changed quite a lot for this term about what they're doing and um, how school life will look like. So the timetable style has changed and all sorts of other things. And I know some of the young people are quite excited, but also really quite nervous about that as well and how all of this is going to work. So I think we pray for wisdom for the teachers and school staff as they adapt to this for the students as well in adapting to that and also um, well-being as well. Like we say, we talk about mental health quite a lot at the moment and that is something that will probably be affected and um, we pray for schools, especially Prince William as they try and support that and the pastoral workers who we have a lot of contact with as well. Yeah. Thank you. And we've, we've um, been talking too to some other uh, yes. people involved in uh, schools in the local area. And we're going to hear from them now about some of the things we can be praying for, uh, for schools, school leaders, teachers and school communities in general. So let's hear from uh, those people. Hi, everyone. Um, for those who don't know who I am, I'm, I'm Janet McMurdo. And um, for my day job, I'm the head teacher of Roundall Primary School. And we've just come to the end of our first day back with children. We've had a brilliant day and the risk assessments largely worked and there were lots of smiles in school today, which was just lovely and a bit of a relief, if I'm honest. Um, I've been asked to uh, ask uh, to talk to you this morning about um, any potential prayer requests. Um, I think, first of all, I'd really like to give thanks. And I'd really like to give thanks for the great team that's Sandal Primary School. I'd really like to give thanks for the children and their families and the way they've positively come back into school. That's been really lovely. Um, and I really give thanks for everybody being healthy and well. It's great, been a lovely start to term. And then, um, what would we like prayer for? Um, I think that that continues. Um, and that as quickly as we can, we uh, can um, remind ourselves what we're in school for. And it's about learning and fun. And uh, we'd really like you to pray that we um, focus on the uh, learning and fun and try not to focus too much on the risk assessments though of course it is really important that we all stay safe so we'd really also like prayer for everybody to stay well thanks ever so much hi i'm becca and i teach design technology at Aundel school and here i am in my classroom for the first time in some months, um, just on one of our training days ahead of the pupils coming back to school next week. Um, and I think our prayer requests are probably quite similar to most people in education at the moment. There's a lot of uncertainty about what lies ahead. Uh, we want the pupils to have a great time at school and to achieve the best they can, but we're not quite sure how that is going to pan out at the moment. And of course, um, safety is first and foremost in everyone's mind, how we can make sure that we are behaving in a way that reduces the risk of the virus spreading and that no one in our community actually does get unwell from that. Um, so we would love you to pray for that, um, especially for the boarders at Aundel School who are living closely together and having to follow lots of different ways of, of living together to help protect each other. Um, and another thing that you could be praying for is that we are remembering that we do have a hope beyond um, surviving the academic year, um, protection from COVID. Uh, we have a hope of heaven and that that should be uh, remembered by us as Christian staff and pupils. Um, that doesn't get forgotten in all the busyness of the day to day and that perhaps we can share some of that hope in appropriate ways with people in our communities that don't know what, what that hope yet feels like. Um, so yeah, those are three things to pray for us, um, that we would be um, safe and, and protected and that we would be able to share the hope that we have. Thank you for praying for us. 
Susie and I am an HR and Finance Manager at Arundel Primary School. Um, for prayers, I think uh, it would be for each pupil returning to be filled with a fresh enthusiasm and to be in school and just to give them peace because it's actually been quite a long time since they've been in. And just to equip them really with the confidence to uh, persevere during these times because things are different and they're not returning to the school that they knew back in March. Um, and also to pray for the staff, just um, bless them with wisdom and more understanding and just really thankful for their serving hearts, just as we all embark on this new journey together. Hello St Peter's Church family, my name is Tom. I am the Year 5 and 6 teacher at the wonderful Glapthorn CE Primary School. As we head into this new school year, uh, please could you pray for energy as we try and hit the ground running. Uh, please pray for courage for those maybe coming to school for the first time or maybe for those coming to school for the first time in a long time. Uh, and please pray for uh, wisdom for uh, us all as we try to interpret the guidance in this ever-evolving new normal. Thank you very much. I'm Tracy, head teacher of William Law in Warrington, Peterborough and uh, it's, a, it's a primary school and my prayer requests would be for all the children as they come back and for those that are anxious and worried to particularly pray for them and, and their parents. To pray for all the new children that are coming into reception because um, we're not going to be able to do that in the normal way. So the parents are going to have to sort of leave them at the gate and they're going to have to come in. And we pray for the year sixes who have gone on to secondary school without a proper transition. We pray for them too. And pray for all the teachers as they come back. And please pray that we can stay COVID free. So Mark, we've heard from um, the uh, teachers and people involved in education. What about from the perspective of the children and young people in our, in our community? Yeah, so having spent quite a lot of time with that age group this summer, especially those in our church family, there's a lot of nerves, uh, as you can all imagine, um, and with all sorts of things, nerves about going back to school in a pandemic, nerves about it just not being the same, and I think nerves as well, they usually get six weeks off school, they've had six months yeah. And actually, those nerves are always there in September, so they've just multiplied yeah. um, for this September, and I think that as well yeah. is making people nervous. There's some uh, young people and children in our church family who are going to new schools, quite yeah. a, quite a range of ages, going to new schools this year. So I think thinking about them as well, um, and again, that's kind of double nerves for them. Mm -hmm. So um, it's exciting and it's a great opportunity to be back at school but it's going to be different yeah. and so I think yeah those are some things to pray for. So shall we let's let's pray um, let's begin with especially praying for um, a situation in schools and our young yeah. people and teachers uh, and let's then pray a bit more generally. Yeah. Um, so let's light uh, this candle uh, as a reminder to us of God's presence with us and his love for us. Mm. Heavenly Father, we uh, bring before you um, our schools, especially remembering school leaders, head teachers, all who need to take decisions and ask for great wisdom. God, we pray that you be with the teachers who are going back. Please give them strength and wisdom. pray for all the support staff who help schools to function. Lord, we ask for peace for those who are anxious. And 
God, we pray for all the children and young people who are going back to school. And we pray that you calm these nerves that they have. We pray for any anxieties that they have, God, that they know that you're with them along the way. And Lord, more widely, we bring to you all those who are anxious, unwell, grieving, lonely, in any kind of need. In a moment of quiet, we name those known to us. Asking for your comfort, your presence, your healing. And that we might care for one another. Lord, in your mercy, Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. We draw our time of prayer to a conclusion with the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
So we're nearly at the end of our service, just a couple notices. Tonight at 6pm here at St Peter's Church is Sunday Night Worship. It is an informal worship service about half an hour aimed at young people but anyone is welcome and we'll be particularly thinking about how God can help us as we go back to school. So do come along to that if you'd like to. And join us in a few minutes for Zoom coffee. It's great to gather together, um, grab a cup of coffee, uh, get on Zoom and, um, and meet up with some people from the church family. So we're going to uh, finish our worship today by singing that great hymn of praise, Thine Be the Glory, led by Ben, our organist. Let's worship together. As we come to the end of this service, the collect for this Sunday. Almighty God, you called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself. Help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you, through Jesus who was lifted up on the cross for us. And a final prayer of blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and grant you his peace this day and every day. Amen. And the peace. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share with one another a sign of uh, God's peace and see you soon for coffee. Sing his praise again And all oh my soul Sing like the heavens are waiting Roll like an army of angels We'll sing his praise again Come on, lift your hands and sing it Oh my soul Sing to the God of the ages Sing to the Lord of creation We'll sing
lifting his praise again. 